the browser's functionality to do geolocation. And the upshot of that is if we're on a mobile device, we got, um, we got uh, um, the, the GPS. So we were able to, to, to pinpoint the location very accurately. And that's something that is really good to do when you're talking about maps to get a real accurate uh, notification of, of where the person is. But there's other times where it's not quite as critical um, to determine where the person's location is. If we can be approximate with the person's location, that may actually be good enough. So I guess the question I would have is, what are some reasons other than mapping that we might want to use geolocation? Think of some hypothetical situations on a website that we, we might want to use geolocation. Yeah, like like to find like the closest or at the at the uh, at the very best nearby um, possible branches of your store or or of your organization or restaurant or whatever. All right. So um, for that, you may not need the fine-tuned uh, geolocation to find out exactly what you are. But if you're in Elyria and you want to know where the WalMarts are, it can give you the ones closer here and it can give you a better guess than you know just showing you a map of the whole country. So maybe showing you nearby locations. The example that they gave in the book was nearby events. And if you think, you know, a band going out on tour, you could you could focus on the the closest to um, the person that's making the request and viewing their page. Um, if you were talking about, like, like we said, a restaurant or some other business, you could show the closest locations for that. You could also maybe target your advertising based on, uh, based on uh, the location. If, for example, you were selling sporting goods, you could, for people in this area, you know, target Ohio State or something along those lines. So. For any number of different reasons, we may actually want to generate a page that contains um, content that's geared based on, on where we're from. And what we're going to look now is we're going to look for the content um, that is generated by a PHP page. So the examples that we're going to go over are going to be using uh, a PHP plugin that will give us um, some information about our location. And then we can write PHP code uh, to determine that. Now, for some of these things, I might have to fudge the data, all right? Because obviously, it's going to be hard to test because if I do, uh, if this does IP detection, it's going to return over and over and over again that I'm in Elyria, Ohio, all right? Where if we want to test it, like what would happen if we're in Michigan? What would happen if we're in Pennsylvania? Well. We'll have to fake that. We'll, we'll go and hard code some values in um, just to test those out. And that's not unheard of, by the way. Um, if you're dealing with processes, uh, if you're really thoroughly testing, uh, doing unit testing of something, and you're testing a particular module, um, you may actually have to sort of fudge some of your code to test all the conditions. You know, If you want to test like what happens if there is some kind of disk full error. What happens to your database? You know, what happens to your application if the database is you're trying to update it and there's a disk full error? Well, you may not actually want to go and fill up your disk on a test server. You may want to sort of fake that condition by, you know, hard coding some kind of error status or whatever. So it's not unheard of to go in and fudge that. So the particular plugin that we're going to look at is this. It is the Geo plugin. And this can be used in a variety of contexts. Here's a few test routines that they show. And they have here, they're showing what the IP address is for us. 
and if you click geolocate, it knows that we are in Elyria, Ohio, that this is our area code. That could also be a beneficial, you know. If you were looking for, you know, insurance agents, let's say, let's say you're an insurance company, and you want to show local insurance agents, you might match based on area code. That's a good, fairly reliable uh, indicator. Um, where, what country we're in, the latitude and longitude, but again, that won't necessarily be ours because this is not being done with GPS. This is being done based on IP detection. We use dollars here, it's telling us. Uh, our currency symbol is a dollar sign and it's a one-to-one -one for US currency. And also, interestingly enough, shows us some nearby places. So, again, if you're thinking of showing all the Walmarts in this area or um, all the insurance agents for us. It not only gives us this plug-in, the, the, the city that we're located in, it also gives us some other ones that we can try and, and test to see um, with that. All right. So we get all this information. Now the question is, is what do we, you know, how do we get this information? You know, we can see that we did this little demo on the screen, but how do we get this information? And more importantly, uh, what can we do with it? And how we can incorporate this in, into our code? Um, we could, as, as we said before, we could put uh, maps if we got this kind of stuff in it. We could incorporate it in a map. We've seen how we can do that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up under PHP, their tool, and there's any number of different ways that this can be implemented. This can be implemented in ASP, uh, via JSON, and so on. There's also some extras that you can get where you can map a latitude and longitude to a postal code. With PHP, you have two choices on how to run this plugin. One of it is to use their web service. So what you can do is this line of code here, essentially, oops, I just wanted to point at it, I didn't want to click it. This line of code here, if you incorporate that in your PHP, it's going to return an array. And that array is going to contain all this stuff. All right, the IP that made the dress, some status, a little credit, the city, the region, the area code, DMA code, whatever that is, country, country name, continent code, latitude, longitude, and so on, along with... Well, they, ju they just show some of the information. Now, that involves calling their service and getting an array back. There's another way that we can, can do this, and that is we can actually download the class plugin. And that's what we're going to do. All right? We're going to go and download that. And it doesn't... Huh, shoot. going to go and save the code as I'll save it as a dot text file and I'll rename it to dot inc This machine doesn't have the ability to pull this kind of archive out, so I didn't download the archive file. So, somewhere here, right here, thank you. You know the shame is, is almost all the stuff is mine. 
to. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I can't even pin this on anyone else. Usually I go and I take them and put them in a folder periodically. I, I should probably do that. All right, let me go and rename this to .inc. Now that we have this, we can include this code and we can do this kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to copy this example all right, and use this as a starting point. All right. We have our include file and um, then we have some sample code that actually um, uses that include file. So let me go and save this. I just renamed their class to dot I'm just going to rename it to this so it's easy. Then I'm going to move it to my um, local web server here and make sure that's fired up. this in. Make sure my server is up and running. And I should be able to type in localhost <coughs> sample and it's griping because I'll bet I renamed one of the include files in one place but not in the other. Acquire wants geoplugin.inc Bonehead. All right. Uh, 
and it doesn't know that. It doesn't know where we are. Why doesn't it know where we are? Because we're not through an ISP that has an IP address assigned. We are on our local machine, which is 127.0.0.1. So I'll have to move this up to um, our web server, and hopefully that will work better for us. Didn't think of that. Does everyone understand why it gave me that error? Or why, not error, but it didn't tell me that. Because I'm not really connected to the internet, all right? And therefore, uh, I'm not connected to the internet when I'm accessing that. I'm accessing that on my local machine. In other words, I could be disconnected from the internet and I could still pull up localhost because that's not out on the internet. So I don't need an internet ser service provider. It's not going through it. Therefore, the IP I have is the standard 127.0.0.1. Let me go here. Let me FTP it over to this. Now let's go. It's doing essentially the same thing because it knows we're connected via LC's network. Try a proxy server. Are you connected? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, this works, and this says that, that I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. All right. It's actually good. We can play around maybe with a couple different proxy servers to simulate being in other places. What is a proxy server, by the way, and what are they used for? Yeah. A lot of people use them in other countries to bypass their censorship. Um, for example, you know, uh, certain uh, places, like, you know, certain sites have blocked to allow entrance from other places. And, and so on. Uh, one relatively innocuous thing that, that could be done, for example, is certain uh, uh, broadcast content from TV networks is only available in a certain country. For example, um, like if you're going to watch Hulu online, I believe that's only available in the United States. Well, what if you live in Canada or something, you know, or you live in the United Kingdom? Well, if you use a proxy server to pretend you're in the United States, so what happens is you make a request 
to the, or you indicate to the proxy server to make a request, it actually makes a request and displays the results to you. So that's sort of what uh, the proxy server is. And again, uh, people uh, can use it to, to help cover their tracks anonymously. And again, in, in repressive places, people use them to be able to, uh, to connect to social networking sites or other sites where there might be censorship. So with that in mind, I'm glad we have something working here. Let's go and let's actually start playing with uh, a page that will do something. So what I'm going to do is we can do something um, that will maybe, you know, take a look at the state and display um, specific information specific to that state. Find another proxy. Now here's a UK proxy. This one says we're coming in through Chicago, Illinois. So let's go and let's put content in here for um, if we know that they're in Illinois versus if we know they're in Georgia. All right. Um, go Bulls, go Hawks, or something like that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my code here. And this is a sample that I'm going to use sort of as my basis. So I'll open that up in Notepad. And then I'm going to create a new complete web page that will be my sporting goods store. These first handful of lines are the code that actually goes out and does the IP detection. All right? So this is the plugin code. Here I'm creating the new plugin object and I'm going and I'm asking the plugin to go do its thing and return back location that I can go and I can query. So I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to also put my doc type and stuff in here because I'm going to make it a completed page as opposed to just uh, a page fragment like this one is. I'll go and copy my old web pages of the 50,000 of them that are lying on the desktop. I'm going to get rid of all the style sheets, but we will come back to talk on, talk about those. Now, 
I can do almost a very similar thing that I did with the Werfel plugin, except I'm not using the Werfel plugin, I'm using the geolocation plugin. So if you remember last time uh, with the Werfel plugin, what did we do? We queried some of the attributes of that. We asked, is it a mobile device? Is it a wireless device? Is it a mobile device? And we went through and we were able to place based on categories. And then we had some if statements that said, if phone do this, if desktop do this, if, and so on down the line. We're going to do a very similar thing here. And we could fine tune it as much as, as we want, right? For example, we could have a section of code for people in Georgia. We could then further customize it for having some code specific to people that are in Atlanta. All right? Much like it's not much like we did with the mobile where it wasn't just mobile or not mobile. We could say mobile, tablet, high-end mobile phone, low-end mobile phone. So we can really Whatever degree of um, granularity we want on this, we can take the control. Now, just to demonstrate, we'll do something straightforward and simple. But again, we could take this as far as we want to. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into PHP mode. And... like the state was in the region. So I can say if I'm sure we're getting that one. Capital G, capital. then we know we're in Georgia and we can display something specific to Georgia. Still in Atlanta Hawks? I just thought of that. I say I hope I hope I'm not like talking about like, you know, the the the, the Cincinnati Royal or the Cincinnati. What was it? it was the Cincinnati Royals, I think. Back in when Oscar Robertson played. All right. So we'll try this and. over, should be able to see the effect of that. Get an error because I forgot something. Unexpected online. I do. And at line forty four. When you get that, it means it hit the end and expected to get something else. So what is it expecting? Oh, 
that because that goes with this. Okay, go Hawks. And if we go into this guy. Oh. It says go Bulls. All right. So. How far can we take this? We can take this as far as we need to. In other words, could you imagine, we could, if you wanted to, apply a different style to a page, depending on the region. All right? Um, we could change the content of the page, depending on um, the region. We just saw an example there of where we uh, were to change the content, uh, content um, uh, of a page where I just had two different things in, in uh, uh, an if statement. Um, I could just as well, again, put that in and, and do it with as whatever degree of granularity I want to. In other words, I looked at state, I could look at other attributes and tell. Uh, and based on that, I could, um, you know, I could uh, change the content. But again, I could also do the same thing with, with, uh, with um, uh, the appearance. This is where PHP is really cool to work with. And this is where PHP is really horrible to work with. All right? Because. A PHP file is simply an HTML document with these PHP declaratives slapped in the middle of it. All right? And I can put any PHP code I want to there, and I can mix PHP and HTML, and even PHP and CSS. I'm going to go and download. download an Atlanta Hawks logo. what I want you to think about while I'm doing this. I'm going to download two logos. I'm going to download a Hawks and a Bulls logo. Think about how I would make it so that the Hawks logo shows up if you're in Georgia as the background of the page and the Bulls will show if I'm in Illinois.
What would I do to do that in here? How would I make that happen? Could put an include file with CSS. Um, I'm not going to make it an include file, but I could. All right, I'm going to just embed the code right in here. All right. Here's how I answer questions like that if I'm never sure. All right, because sometimes this can get tricky. All right, but what I'll do is I'll say, let's assume I'm in Atlanta. How would I want, how would I make the hawk the background image in Atlanta? I'd do something like this. I would say body background URL Hawk dot gif <laughs> now it did, yeah. So I just hard-coded it for the, the hawks to show up. I just hard-coded it for the hawks to show up. Why? Because I want to make sure I got that syntax right. There's one thing I'm a firm believer of is, is only try to fight like one battle at a time. All right? I want to dynamically set the background of this page. All right? That will involve two things. That will involve me putting in the correct CSS to set the background of the page and me being smart enough to vary it dynamically. So I'm going to make sure I have the first part done right. So I'm going to go here and I'm just going to pull it up. And even though the IP detection isn't working, now. There we go. All right, we have the background for that. The background for the bulls would be, of course, the same thing, except this is going to be bulls.jpg. make this dynamic? What, what's my next step to do? Repeat that? Oh, so in other words, you're saying I could do like this and put that style on there. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, replace it. Correct. Get rid of that. You don't need that go hawks. Right? Actually, this says bull. You try being up here when that thing goes up. See if you're not shook up for a little while afterwards. Now, the only thing wrong with that, or the only thing that, that is incorrect about that, I, I guess I'll say incorrect, is not horribly wrong, is I would put this up in the head section. Because you're stuck. Yeah, because your, your, your CSS code should be in the head section. So that's one thing I could do. All right, I could do this, and this should work. So let me go and save it, and let me go and do guy, as well as the two images. 
test it on our two proxy servers. All right, there we go. Georgia one shows that. Chicago one shows that. And we worried for a second there. There was a little pause. All right. Now, you can see how we could extend this as far as we wanted to. One thing that we could do, though, is we could actually, and again, I'm only demonstrating this just to show you the power of PHP. I could do something, if I was actually doing it, I would do this. I wouldn't have these two big if statements and output the whole style tag. Because most of the style tags are the same. The only thing that's different is this word in here. So what I would do is I would do something like this. I define some sort of default image, first of all. What if they weren't in Illinois or Georgia? And if they're in Georgia, I would set the image to box.gif. If they are in Illinois, I would set to pools.jpg. on my default image of a giant basketball. And Atlanta still works, pools still work, and if I go and pull it up on my local machine where it doesn't know where I am, I get the whole change. Box and
to get the big gigantic basketball. All right. Now, if you think about this, and again, looking at the code here, it's very easy for your code, for you to lose control of your code in PHP. All right. Because PHP is such a freeform language, you can pop between HTML and PHP really any point you want. Here I'm doing it smack dab in the middle of a CSS statement. So right here, I'm inserting a little dynamic chunk of code. And again, how did I know how to do that? Well, I went and I created the static code first to display the hawks or the bulls or whatever. Then I went and I replaced that with some variable that I'm setting dynamically. So, if you think about it, we could set a whole slew of variables up here that are different depending on the region. Now, in a larger uh, application, we might actually be pulling some of those things from a database. But we could go and we could set a whole slew of things that we go in later and use our PHP code to output where we want it to appear. So for example, the default link I'm going to make is the MBA.com. So I'll make Default link, HTTP, colon, slash, slash, www.nba.com. this would be full. Bottom line is I'm setting a whole bunch of variables in here to include a name, a link, an image, Again, the sky's the limit as far as what we do. And then I'm going to intersperse these where I want them to appear. If I want to put a link here, that link would normally be http slash slash maybe www.mba.com, but I can localize it, so I'm going to pop into PHP mode here. Output the name of the link that I've defined and exit PHP mode. And then output the name that I want to display. Now, Statements like this can be very confusing. 
that's why I say go in and write out the hard-coded version of it first and then go in and figure out the PHP. So for example, if my link looked like this, a href equals http on something dot com. All right. What do I want to replace with dynamic? I want to replace the things within the quote. So I get rid of the stuff within the quotes and I replace that with my PHP command to go and print that out. So I make sure that this works. JavaScript can be forgiving about that. PHP is not forgiving about that. All right. Here I'm running on my server, and it's not in Illinois or Georgia, so it has a link to the MBA. Here I'm running on the proxy server. I'm running on the proxy server in Georgia. I refresh this and I get I go bulls. Okay, there we go. Hawks. I think I was just on the. I thought I was on just on the wrong screen. Yeah, this is. Yeah, the UK one went to. It went to Illinois. Now I do this for a couple reasons. Again, to sort of make the point that this geolocation, this is something that really would benefit even desktop users. This isn't necessarily per se a mobile uh, device uh, consideration. But you certainly could incorporate that in the mobile device. There's an example in the book where they show looking for events. That might be a little more appropriate for a mobile device than this specific example. But the same idea holds true. You use the IP detection or the geolocation, the GPS, to determine the location. Based on that, then, you can filter out um, what information, what content to show. The other point I wanted to do about this is I took a little bit of care to format the way my code is. Without doing that, it's going to be a mess, believe me. All right. What I like to do, wherever possible, and it's not always possible, is to have a block of code at the top that gathers all the data that I'm going to need, and then have the rest of the code simply drop in that dynamic data where I need it. Most dynamic pages are like that. Again, not necessarily all of them, but most of them. If you think of a dynamic web page, you're thinking of the template is relatively static, What's different is the individual pieces of data that gets plopped in those places. So I'm gathering up all the data that I want here, and then I pop that dynamic code wherever I want to. So the rest of the document more or less looks like an HTML document with just a couple of pops in the PHP to, to print out the, the dynamic stuff.
right. Questions about any of this? couple things housekeeping wise. Your, your, your last quiz before the final quiz will be this week. Um, so that will be posted very similar to what we did before, probably available from Thursday to Monday. The one thing I was going to mention uh, this morning, but I uh, did not, is we will not, we'll probably not have classes this coming Monday. And I'm, I'm probably going to be out that day. So I will let you know for sure, uh, but you can kind of count on that. If I am out that day, I'll have some sort of activity for you folks for both classes, but uh, and then for this class as well. Any questions over any of this? Your next assignment is to take what you did for your previous assignment and make a um, mobile application version of it. That should be, if you work through the examples that we did the last couple times, that should be a piece of cake. All right. Your next assignment I haven't come up with yet, the one after that one, but it will involve doing something like this, creating some sort of geolocation. All right. I am thinking you might well have another assignment after that that maybe will bring everything together. I don't know. I'll have to look to see point-wise and time-wise how that is because we actually have like, uh, after today, we have two and a half weeks of class left. So that would be my expectation. I have two more assignments after that. One like this and one maybe that will, that will kind of pull everything together for the class and, and allow you to, to uh, discuss mobile web development. All right. Questions? Comments? I will be sure to post this example up there. All right. Is anyone staying for lab? All right. We'll see you guys on Wednesday.